Okay, guys, let's talk today about coaching playing out from the back or a so-called built-up from behind tactic. Before coaching playing out from the back, you need to know how your players should behave under different circumstances when executing this tactic. And those circumstances can be one of the following. There is no direct danger of ball interception and there is a possibility to play a low through ball. There is no direct danger of ball interception, but there is no possibility to play a low through ball. And the last one is there is a big danger of ball interception. Let's consider each of them in greater detail by starting with the first one. The first situation is when there is no direct danger of ball interception and it is possible to play a low through ball to your teammate. This is the best possible option for us, where you can play out from the back in a consistent and structured way. Ok, now imagine you are the coach of Brighton and Hof Albion and you coach your team a build up from behind. Here central back Lewis Dunk has the ball and there is no danger of missing the ball because of the absence of pressure on him. In this situation we demand him to execute a low through ball followed by a lateral pass to a third person. Thus he passes to Billy Gilmore who immediately executes a lateral pass to Pascal Gross. This strategy is productive because the opponent doesn't expect Pascal Gross to receive the ball in a matter of seconds and it allows us to move the ball up the pitch efficiently. Let's take a look at how this strategy works during the actual game. Here the lateral pass is to the center back, but the principle remains the same. Ok, so players know how they should proceed if there is no direct danger of losing the ball and there is a possibility to play a through ball. Now let's consider another situation when there is no direct danger of ball interception, but playing a through ball is not possible. In this case, we can delay our build-up by using a simple lateral ball until an opportunity to play a vertical through ball arises. Let's have a look at how this works during the actual game. Here our midfielders are marked and it is very dangerous to play a through ball to them. So our centre-back simply plays a lateral ball to another centre-back. In he in turn is waiting for a through ball opportunity to arise, but it doesn't. So he plays a safe horizontal pass back to the left centre-back. Well, but... Finally a through ball has been played. And again. And again. Ok, let's now consider a situation where there is a direct threat of ball interception. Here our defenders are under the opponent's aggressive high pressure, making it difficult to execute controlled and non-dangerous passes. In this case, it's totally fine to play long to avoid losing the ball in the own third. Let's have a look at how it looks during the actual game. Here our right fullback is under pressure and there is a clear danger of losing the ball close to the penalty area. So, opting for a long ball is a reasonable choice under these circumstances. However, even in this scenario we should aim for precision. Ok, now that we understand how our players should behave in different circumstances during the build-up phase, let's design a practice that promotes the desired behavior. In the following practice, 9 players in red play against 8 blues and a goalkeeper. The blue team aims to build up and score on one of two small goals, while the red team employs pressing to win the ball and score on a larger goal. Here the blue team earns a point if they successfully execute a low through ball, which is immediately followed by a lateral pass to a third teammate. Please note that the team will not earn any points if after a through ball a player plays backward instead of laterally. Even so it's fine to do so, in this case the team doesn't progress and therefore doesn't earn any points. You should also tell your players that it's totally fine to play a simple lateral or backward pass where it appears difficult to play a through ball. Of course they also don't earn any points for this as it is very simple to execute. However, a blue team certainly gets a point if they score on one of two small goals. In addition, when a situation becomes too risky to play any controlled and safe ball, blue players can be instructed to play long while still aiming for precision. Here, if one of the blue players receives the ball up the pitch, 
it becomes crucial for other players to support him by immediately moving closer to the ball area. With that in mind, we can tell blue players that if after a long ball they score a goal with at least three of them being within a 20 meter radius from the goal, their team will earn three points instead of just one. You don't even need to mark these areas, you can simply tell players that the coach decides whether they get three points or just one after scoring. As for the red team, they earn three points if they win the ball and score in a large goal. As you can see, this practice is specifically designed to encourage the desired behavior that we want to promote during the build-up phase. Ok guys, I hope this example was helpful in giving you some ideas on how to design your training sessions that align with your coaching thoughts and ideas. And what are your thoughts? How do you coach playing out from the back?